check it out. We're going to show you three different ways to look up values in your data set by using match, exact, and count if. And then we'll also go over a fourth way to filter out the entire rows data by using filter and a combination of some of these other formulas that we're going to use. So as you can see up here, when I type in a value, each of these displays the fact that yes, Bissell is found because we can see it right over here. There is a last name of Bissell in column four and then filters pulling that value all the way out right there. How is this working? And what are the differences between these? Well, let's look at match first. Now I've wrapped match in an if error and an if statement, and I'll show you why in just a second, but let's just pull out the match part of it itself and see what it's doing. So I've got equals match G1. This is a lookup value. So up here in this search bar, which I'll also go over how to make that here in a minute too, because it's a nice little touch to your spreadsheet. So match is looking up the value G1, Bissell, and it's looking it up in the array right here, which is table one last name, which you can see from the red over here is just this last name column. Then we need importantly the match type to be zero so it finds an exact match. And when we do that, we see the value three returned. So match will return the place of that value. So this is the third row down and it's displaying three. If we change this to Fabri, it will display two because Fabri is the second row down. All right. But I want it to display, yeah, the, in the affirmative or no, no match. And in order to do that, we have to use the if error and if functions. So what we can do is take out the match. We can say if match is greater than zero. So if it's actually going to be a value greater than zero, then I display found and if not, not found. Now there is a catch here because it's going to display found for Fabri. But for instance, if I just take out some of the letters, it's not going to display not found because it's an error. It's actually going to give an error there. And I'll pull out the match by itself and show you what I mean by that. Zzz. Equals match greater than zero. That's a, that's a not found value. So it's, it's not going to actually execute that second level of the if statement, which is why I wrapped everything in an if error statement. So we'll put this in the if error part or in the value part and then in the if error part, now we can say not found. So that'll see that there's an error and it's just going to say, hey, you know what? Not found. And that's basically what we're doing, the conditional part of it in all of these functions. And let's go over how you make this little search box up here because I know you're interested in that. All you got to do for this is... Over here on this side, this is just a regular cell that I put some background color in, and then you can actually insert icons. So I went up to insert icons. I searched for the word search and it popped up that magnifying glass. I inserted that in and just resized it over that cell. For the actual search box though, what you can do is go up here to the developer tab and you can turn this on in file options and uh, add the developer tab if you don't see this to your Excel. But then you go insert text box right here under active X controls and you just draw a little text box just like that. How about that? Once you've got it drawn over a cell like this is over J1 now so I resize that kind of like I did on the first one. Then you can right click on it select properties and it brings up this huge menu and what we want is to link it to a cell. So we want to link it to J1. So my other one is linked to G1. And now this one's linked to J1. We need to go up here and close design mode. And now we've got a text box. And that value in the text box is linked to the cell J1. So in the same way up here, this is for all effects and purposes G1. But it's got a nice search bar, text bar built into it. And we can change if you come up here and click design mode again. I can come up here and change and resize this if I need to. But it's, it's sized pretty well the way that I want it to be. Now I'll turn design mode back off and let's look at the exact function. So this is pretty wild looking, right? What's going on inside of here? Let's, let's just look at the exact function and leave these little negative signs out first. 
So let's come over here. Let's say exact G1 table one last name. So that is looking for the text just like we did in the match function in this column in the table. All right, so it is returning an array of values. So it's spilling down and we see that there is a true value. So it is matching right here. But the problem is, let's just see if we can take this out again and equals if this equals true found otherwise not found and let's see what it gives us now it doesn't do any more good because it's still giving us this spill down array so the magic that's happening inside of our big function up here where we've got this sum product and this double negative sign First of all, the double negative sign will convert these to zeros and ones. So instead of the word or the Boolean value true and false, it's going to just say zero for false and one for true. Then we're summing the product. So sum product of all those things. So it's going down and it's summing the values there. So we should see the value of one returned because it's just taking all those values in the array and adding them all up. And here, if I take out the F up here, it's going to be zero. Well, now we're back with, it's either going to be zero or one. Now we're back with something we can understand just like the match function to where we can take that out and we can say, if all of that is greater than zero, then found. And if not, not found. So the advantage that exact has is that it does not require that if error clause. However, the disadvantage that exact has is that let's type in Fabri in lowercase. Exact is still saying not found, even though Fabri is over here. So it's case sensitive, whereas match will know that, yeah, it's Fabri's in there. It's just not capitalized. All right, let's delete this. Let's look at count if. What's going on with count if? Well, count if is a conditional deal, right? So it's going to count the values. Let's pull out the count if part right here. Count if, and it's going to go through this range. So in this case, the range comes before the criteria. And the criteria, all we have to use is G1. So it's going to go through this whole range. And if it's equal to G1, it's going to count. Let's get rid of the greater than zero part because we can see that it will return one. And over here, if I change this to Fabri, then we're going to get two right there. So this will actually could be more than just zero or one if there's multiple last names that are the same here. All right, then the only other things that we need here, we've just got the regular old if statement. So if count if is greater than zero, then we're going to return found. And if not, not found. And here with count if, we do not need that clause like we did with the match function of if error in front. So with match, we do need to catch everything in an if error, but with exact and count, it does not matter. We do not need that. Okie doke. What's going on with filter? I know you're looking at filter over here because even though we've not found anything with any of these, as we can see with filter, we are returning values. So we've typed in BRI and we can see that filter is successfully matching up BRI and Fabri and Brighouse and Bridge and Bridge. So it is a more search intensive tool to where it's going to return anything that matches. So if I add an S, then we've got the Brisset. If I just do Fabri, then we've got Fabri. But this is going to be probably what you need for an actual search bar. What's going on here? Well, we've got a new function. We've got a couple new functions. We've got filter and we've got is number and we've got search. So let's look at them all three. First thing we're going to do is pull out the search and we're going to put it right over here. Search G1. So we're going to have a text that we're searching for this FA. It's going to be searching in table one last name. And you can see that this is similar sort of to the exact values that spilled down. But what it's doing instead, it's either giving an error or the fact that it returned or that it found the value. So in these two cells right here, it did find it and it returns the number one. 
So search is case insensitive. So if we have a capital F and a capital A, it doesn't matter. It's, it's case insensitive. It'll find it either way, but it's still giving us a full spilled down array and we need that to not be the case. That's why the next thing is, is number. So we're going to wrap this in is number function. And this is simply going to say whether or not this is a number. And now instead of those errors, we have false. And instead of the ones, we have true. What's next? Well, now we need to filter out all those false statements. So let's come over here. Let's say filter. And we're going to say table one. And we can select different columns. But for our purposes, we want the whole row to display. So I'm just going to say filter the whole table based on this double function, this is number search. So this is going to filter out the falses and then keep the trues. I'll move that column over so you can see that it's got the same results as we have over here. Now, the only time that that's going to mess up is two instances. One right here where everything is displayed, and I'm going to fix that at the end. I actually didn't fix that in the first instance of filter. But then two, if there's just some gibberish here. Over here we've got not found, and right here we've got a calc error. So we don't want an error statement there. Instead, we'll use our good friend if error, and we'll go value, and then if error, not found. That takes care of that, but what about, what about this? So let's wrap the whole thing in an if statement. So if g1 is equal to nothing, then I'm going to say enter search term. And if not, then I'm going to use all this stuff right here. So now it says enter search term. I'll enter the search term and there we go. It's searching. If you like this, check out this next video because I think you'll enjoy it as well. Hope you have a great one and goodbye.